has always been pressure to stay slim in Hollywood, but as more and more young stars appear to be treading into dangerous territory, has it finally become too much? Yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure. So did I look fat before? Their current targets, Lindsay Lohan and pal Nicole Richie. They look so gaunt that one newspaper even called them the skeleton crew. Here she is leaving a Hollywood nightclub with two guys. You can see how thin her arms are. The way you dress and stuff, I don't think you're aware that you're a heavy set woman. I know I'm a big woman, so yeah. what? So I was guessing your weight. Can you please get on the scale and then we'll have an over-under, that's all? No. Hey celebrities, it's Vitaly and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Looking back at the 2000s is pretty wild. Along with the rise of the celeb-obsessed culture came another dangerous trend, size zero. Body positivity did not exist at the time. The ideal body was all about prominent clavicles and trembling hip bones. The it girls of the period, such as Misha Barton or Paris Hilton, were extremely slim. I'm hot! <laughs> On television, plus-sized women were nothing but figures of fun, such as the fat Monica seen in flashbacks on Friends, or Gwyneth Paltrow's fat suit-wearing character in a shallow hell movie. Even Bridget Jones, the era's fictional representative of the average woman, was in continual battle to lose weight, despite the fact that she was only a size 12. Damn! So much of that time period is characterized by body shaming, diet culture, fat phobia and toxic beauty ideals. And all of that was projected onto female celebrities and then passed down to young impressionable minds. Women who looked perfectly fine were heckled for being flabby, jumbo-sized or obese. And the thing is, we believe those tabloid headlines. We'd been so brainwashed into thinking that anything bigger than a size 10 was scandalous. So buckle up legend, you're not ready for this one only on Vitaly's channel. Don't forget to like this video celeb don't be shady. Also we're so close to 50k subs. Subscribe if you haven't already. That's all. Before we get to the topic, I have a little confession to make. In case you didn't know, growing up I was a pretty fat kid. My Russian household always loved to eat, to this day. And unfortunately in my school, being fat was a social su**. I was even nicknamed a pregnant f it. Welcome to the Russian realness. This body shaming situation traumatized me so much until one day I was like, enough is enough, I need to lose weight and become a skinny legend, as I thought at the time, so people can accept me, which looking back now is some bullshit. So in the span of 3 months I've lost 25 pounds, which was so not healthy for a 16 year old. I even got an eating D at some point. Even when I looked visibly too skinny and not healthy, I was still not happy with my weight and I felt fat. Not gonna lie, that was such a dark period of my life. At some point I was even afraid to eat food, cause I was genuinely scared of gaining my weight back. And when I came back to school after the whole summer of being on a diet, now I was getting bullied for being too anorexic. <laughs> So yeah, I definitely can relate to today's topic. And I have a lot to say. Let's start from the very beginning. Babe, after this video check out my previous ones too. They're also iconic. Anytime the Us Weekly journalists needed to include a celebrity weight for a diet story at the magazine, they had to call Dr. Fred Pescatore. He's a practicing physician in New York and is also the author of many nutritional books. For example, the A-list diet. We would send him photos and he would look at them and say, she weighs 120 pounds or here she weighs 150 and here 135. We didn't think that was crazy. It was just normal. At the time, objectifying bodies was a national pastime and opportunities to do so were everywhere. It didn't matter what a celebrity might say about their own body and their health. In the days before social media magazine speculation about who had an ED overpowered any statement celebs offered about their intake, metabolism and diet. And if you were a celebrity, especially one who was a woman, and wanted your way to stay out of the gossip rags, forget about it. Famous bodies and what they fed them were the hardest stories. Issues about weight sold amazingly well, in touch weekly reporter says. The pressure to come up with good headlines and stories was immense. In those days, print issues of magazines were sold in every drugstore and supermarket. A single issue was weekly sold an average of 990,000 copies, while In Touch magazine topped off a year later with an average of 1,250,000 copies. Damn! 
Just think about it, if one headline resulted in 20% bump in sales, that was roughly an additional $800,000 on top of the magazine's average 4 million per week, not including subscriptions. <clears throat> Which meant that if including diet and weight stories on the cover of the magazine got people to stop by a newsstand and buy a copy, publishers would ride that strategy into the sunset. Conversely, in the media, many celebrities at the time were visibly underweight. Oh, I wonder why they might have felt the need to lose weight. Sarcasm. All right, listen. You put yourself out there. You're, you're doing the show. Of course people are going to comment on your life. The way you dress and stuff, I don't think you're aware that you're a heavy set woman. I know I'm a big woman, so yeah. what? So I was guessing your weight. And I was going to say to you today, can you please get on the scale and then we'll have an over-under. That's all? No. Why not? Why not? I'm not going to get on the scale if you want to weigh me. If you get on the scale, I'm serious. Why would you want me to get on the I'll scale tell you why. so you could humiliate me? No, no, that's not humiliating. I think you should be proud of what you weigh. I don't think any uh, woman really wants to get on the scale and broadcast it to... Why are women, when Anna Nicole is so liberated, why is Anna Nicole embarrassed to say how much she weighs? Because I'm not going to do that. I'll, all I want to hear is pop jokes from you. What? All I hear is more jokes and more slander. No, no, not slander. From you. I'm not going to slander you. Stupid I will put a thousand dollars in your college, uh, the college fund for your child. That's I'll tell you why, Howard. If we weigh you now, I'll give you three thousand dollars, courtesy of i1.com and Trim Spa. Trim Spa, nope. plus an Xbox for your son. Nope, not enough. <laughs> well, I guess that's not going to work. No, you have to be weighed. Yep. Please, I got, I got, I, I could win seven hundred dollars if you, uh, yeah. please. Nope. How much do you weigh? How much do you think I weigh? Want me to be honest? But you're going to get pissed off at yeah, me. Don't be insulted by it. I mean, he's got. He's I'm already got an pissed off at you. You Go heard ahead. the whole thing. I don't know why you're pissed off at me. You shouldn't be. I'm so nice to you. You are so not. 300. No. Howard. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Off the top of my head, I can recall the extreme thinness of Hilary Duff, Lindsay Lohan, Mary Kate Olsen, Nicole Richie, and Ashley Simpson. Young women in the public eye who likely felt the pressure to be thin, and all of whom I can recall being scrutinized for both pre and post weight loss bodies. When Hilary Duff first became famous, she was this young teenager with a big round face. People just liked her because she seemed like your average teen. <laughs> But by the fall of 2005, people noticed that the Duffster had gone from winsome to waif-like. All of a sudden, she's very, very thin, and you can see her cheekbones and her jaw, just everything is totally defined. For Hillary Duff, losing weight really aged her. I mean, she's barely out of her teens. When Hillary was just 17 years old, she was shocked by a headline that said, Hillary Duff puffs up. Mortified, Duff began a hardcore weight loss regimen. Like, Howard Stern even tricked Nicole Richie into being way on his program in 2005. That's effing crazy. So you're not jealous of these chicks with the big boobs? No. Yeah, I like your, like your chest. Kind of sexy. Thanks. Like, it's flat, but it's got, you got the cleave. I wonder what you look like naked. I gotta check that out. Maybe I'll party with you one time. It's pretty sexy. Stand up. Let me see your new body. Come on. Show it off a little bit. Turn around. Let me see you. Give me the spin. What do you weigh now? Step right over there on there. I'll tell you what you weigh. Let me see what you weigh. <laughs> Step on that. She's hissing at you. She Step weighs 103 tops. But I'm gonna bet. I'm Not gonna even. say. I can't stand I'm gonna say you're under 100 pounds. I'm 105 maybe. I say she's under 100. Under square. Stay under square. She is short. What I tell you? 97 oh pounds. 97 pounds. You must have lost. Oh, I'm on a scale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you weigh 97. That's like a hidden scale. Yeah. What? 97 pounds. <laughs> Only two people have fallen for that, you and Anna Nicole Smith. I thought you were making me stand here. How much did Anna Nicole weigh? Oh. At the time, we get her on at the time it was like 380. Oh, oh, not when she was Yeah, no, when she was heavy. Ah. She said she didn't want to get on our stupid weigh machine. Yeah, she called it a weigh machine. Ah. <laughs> ah. And obviously, tabloids led the charge. A weight change was never just a weight change in the celebrity world. Each lost pound was assigned to speculation. Whether it was a result of painful breakup, a drug habit, or a secret struggle with anorexia. And I'm not even exaggerating. Hollywood's extreme diets. Everyone is 10 pounds right now, so. Is the pressure causing stars to get scary skinny? Yeah, I think there's pressure. The headlines scream, why so thin and thinner than ever? Yeah, I think there's a lot of pressure.
So did I look fat before? Their current targets, Lindsay Lohan and pal Nicole Richie, have they gotten dangerously thin? Nicole's stylist noticed the difference. Every time I see her, she's smaller and smaller. And what about Lindsay, dropping over 15 pounds in the last month alone? Well, I've been training and stuff, so. You be the judge. Take a look. Here they are a few months ago, and here they are now. Teen People magazine was so concerned by the images, they launched a poll measuring the influence on their young readers. Some teens can definitely get the wrong message looking at women in magazine ads and also on TV shows and in movies. It can get a little dangerous because they're seeing examples of people who are not at a normal weight. Well, I'm probably not going to eat because I'm so sick and everything, right? Lindsay joked about her disappearing curves. Definitely in young Hollywood, there's a pressure to be thin. But I'm content. I think because you look so perfect that you have to keep your figure and you have to watch what you eat. I don't look perfect, but I don't feel any pressure. I mean, I, I eat healthy, I exercise, I'm mm. happy. You see the two starlets out on the town looking unusually thin. Their dramatic look was plastered in the New York Daily News and the caption read, Skeleton Crew. Nicole Richie's disappearing act has been evident for a while. But it's the newly blonde, wildly popular Lindsay Lohan who has tongues wagging. You can see how thin her arms are. Best Weekly journalists even remember how intensely they tracked Jessica Simpson's figure over the years, and even recounting an instance where they followed her to a Mexican restaurant in New York City. And guess what happened in that restaurant? Yep, they were given Jessica's bill at the end of the evening, and totaled the number of calories of the margarita she had that night. Now that's intense. If somebody told us that Justin Timberlake and Cameron Diaz were going to be at a restaurant at 7 o'clock, they were going to walk in at 7 o'clock. And guess who had the table? next to them, we did. The charges of an set were focused on mainly white stars, leaving women of color in a strange bind. Halle Berry, Angela Bassett, Salma Hayek, and J-Lo were frequently showcased as a healthy examples to the white women on the page, leaving little room for discussion of ED among people of color. There was definitely an issue with lack of diversity in the pages, says the editor. By the way, can you guess what issue of Us Weekly was the best seller in 2006? Yep, a cover picture of Janet Jackson bearing her abs, with headline her lifelong weight struggles. On that day, June 5th of 2006, the issue sold, attention, 1,330,000 copies. People vote with their wallets, I guess. Now, I wanna stop right here and give you guys a few examples of celebrities and characters that we were influenced into thinking were fat, when in reality, they were anything but. Bridget Jones's Diary. While it's no doubt such an iconic movie, much of it is focused on Bridget's weight. The film is filled with fat jokes that poke fun at Bridget, inferring that she's overweight, even though she's meant to weigh around 130 pounds. In case you didn't know, Renee Zellweger had to gain weight for this role. And let me tell you, it caused the media storm. It was so silly, she said. The 20 donuts a day rumors, and does she look better, Bridget or bony questions. I didn't understand the fascination with it. It's my job, you're supposed to look like the characters you play, and that's all I was doing. To this day, I still can't believe that we were told that Bridget Jones, and by extension Renee Zellweger, was fat. Bridget is perfectly normal weight, and I've never understood why it matters so much. No male actor would get such scrutiny if he did the same thing for a role. Kate Winslet, during the release of Titanic. In case you didn't know, Kate and the film's director, James Cameron, notoriously failed to get along while shooting the movie. It wasn't just fans who made fun of Kate's supposed fatness though. But also Cameron himself was referring to her as quote, Kate weighs a lot. Honestly, that would be my 13th reason. Then why would you hire her to begin with if she's so overweight? I can't with them. I'll never understand this freaking industry. Apparently, I was too fat, Kate said. They were so mean, I wasn't even fucking fat. If I could turn back the clock, I would have used my voice in a completely different way. I'm a young woman, my body's changing. I'm figuring it out, I'm deeply insecure, I'm terrified. Don't make this any harder than it already is. That's bullying, you know, and actually borderline abuse. I would say. While talking about fat phobia, I couldn't help but mention Britney's 2007 VMAs performance. We all remember the savage media headlines at the time. And honestly, I still don't understand why the world collectively thought that Britney looked fat during the performance. Yeah, she was wearing a revealing outfit that leaves no room to hide. But she looks incredible for the woman who just gave birth to two children, for f sake. 
Give me a break. Jessica Simpson. In January 2009, Jessica was pictured at a concert in Florida, wearing a high-waisted jeans and a leopard belt. She looked different from the previous years, and the world decided to put her on blast for being too overweight. And to look fat, of course, meant to look terrible. In 2020, she had this to say about the backlash she received. This picture that circulated and went worldwide broke my heart. Not the picture necessarily, but the caption. Like all the captions, and it was viral. I was like, wait a second, I'm so confused. My very first thought was not my pain at becoming a joke or everyone laughing at me. It was, oh no, I feel so bad that my boyfriend has to be with a fat girl. Nicole Richie. Let me tell you something, the 2000s media was obsessed with Nicole's weight, beginning with her introduction on The Simple Life alongside Paris Hilton. Obviously, Nicole was not overweight, but the media immediately branded her as such, which led to all of us believing it too. When we were promoting the first season, people would ask me how I felt about being a voluptuous woman. It was weird, cause I've been skinny my whole life. I can show you pictures of me the day I left for rehab. But as soon as she lost weight, they started blasting her for being too thin. Like, what's wrong with this world? As for Nicole Richie, it didn't go unnoticed when she first appeared on The Simple Life that she was a bit pudgier than her co-star Paris Hilton. The latest edition of Us Magazine asks on its cover, is she too thin? Inside is a two-page spread showing Nicole's body makeover. It's not unusual for hot young actresses to work hard to stay slim and in shape. But Lindsay Lohan and Nicole Richie have people asking, just how low should you go? Tyra Banks. In 2007, she was being referred to as overweight when she was photographed by paparazzi on a beach. I'm not even gonna comment anything. Tyra said it all herself. The bottom line is that people are used to seeing me looking like this and like this, and everyone seems to be pretty okay with that. But for some reason, people have a serious problem when I look like that. <laughs> all right, when I look <laughs> like that. But luckily, I'm strong enough and I have a good support system. I mean, I love my mama. She has helped me to be a strong woman so I can overcome these kind of attacks. But if I had lower self-esteem, I would probably be starving myself right now. But that's exactly what is happening to other women all over this country. So I have something to say. To all of you that have something nasty to say about me or other women that are built like me, women that sometimes or all the time look like this, I have one thing to say to you. Kiss my fat ass. All these people are just the tip of the iceberg. Obviously, there is a lot more that we didn't talk about. However, starting in 2008, things began to change. Due to the growing presence of the body positivity movement and the overall shifts in how society views mental illness, there was a greater emphasis within the media on avoiding triggers to protect the readers and themselves from the lawsuits, obviously. Since 2008, all the magazines have seen a continuous drop in sales. As of 2021, the average single copy sales fell under 65,000 for each publication. There were different society views and expectations. We spoke about these subjects differently back then, says one of the magazine's founders. I feel bad about it 100%. I can't imagine how difficult that is to have people scrutinizing your body on a global scale. It was just so normalized at the time, even in the most mainstream publications. I'm relieved that tabloids don't have the reach they once did. Okay, legends, I think this is it for today's video. I know that on this channel we all love the 2000s era, but it's also important to realize that it was not perfect whatsoever. It's super important to recognize the cultural shift towards body positivity over the last decade or so. Nowadays, we have much more diverse representation of bodies in the media, and honestly, that's everything. Obviously, there is still a lot of work to be done, but comparing to the 2000s and the situations that we've talked about in this video, it seems like a freaking revolution. Babe, after this video check out my previous ones too, they're also iconic. If you enjoyed this type of content as much as I do, please, don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below and of course like this video. Yes, celebrity, I'm talking to you. Y'all are being so shady to me lately. Do it now. Follow me on Instagram at Vitaly for the record and I will see you in my next video this week. And remember, your ex is deaf and toxic. The best way to make him upset is to become successful. Bye, legends.